Good morning. We're going to go and look at a little bit of the stuff that we're going to use for our 3D printer class this summer. Um, it starts June 3rd. Uh, the first stream should be at 8 o'clock Central Time. Um, we'll put that on YouTube so that you can check that out. Um, these are a couple of the things that we're going to uh, look at the summer. It's going to be a 10-week course, so we'll have several uh, individual meetings. Um, mainly, I'm going to work with the Ender 3 over here. Um, so we've got it in the box. We'll build that. Um, I don't know if I'll put the whole build online or not. We'll see. Um, that It doesn't take very long to build the Ender 3, maybe, maybe 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, so we might just record the whole thing and show you what it looks like to build it. Um, but it's just a stock one. And then I've got a bunch of upgrades up here at the top. Um, we've got a BL Touch. You don't really need a BL Touch for the Ender 3, but a lot of people want to know how that thing works. And so we're going to put that on there. Um, we've got a, a different bed for it. So one that's a magnetic bed. Um, I think I've got a uh, Raspberry Pi over here so we can build an uh, Octoprint server for it so that we can do some remote monitoring and printing. Um, we've got, uh, what else did I get in there? Uh, chain guard type thing. So, uh, you can 3d print your own, but I just went ahead and they're relatively cheap to buy. So I just went ahead and bought one to put on there. Um, uh, an upgrade for the extruder so that, um, it, we don't wear it out too quickly. Um, we got a couple of rolls of filament. Um, uh, I've got, so normally if I were teaching this course in person, um, we would have some filament exchange days so that you could trade some of your filament with another person's, but that won't be as obvious on how we can do that during the summer um, with us being online. So I've got a MakerBox subscription here, and uh, one of the things that you get is you get a sample of three or four filaments. Um, so this one came with an antibacterial PLA. It came with uh, PETG. It came with a wood fill, so those are kind of nice. Um, they actually print um, wooden filament, so there's uh, little pieces of sawdust basically embedded in the filament. Um, it's actually interesting. Um, when you print with this wood fill, it kind of smells like a campfire while you're printing it. Uh, it doesn't actually catch fire, but it smells like that. Um, here's a flame retardant ABS, speaking of fire. Um, and so you get a, a, an assortment of things. So that might be an option if you don't want to go and buy um, a bunch of individual rolls and you don't have anybody to trade with, um, then this maker box might be an idea of how you can get a couple of different samples. You know, you usually get, let's see, it says on here, um, 16 meters of this. It looks like all of them are 16 meters. That's enough to print a decent sized or several uh, pieces uh, that if you don't want to get a whole roll of filament. Normally a roll of filament is going to look more like this. So, you know, a whole roll, um, a kilogram of filament. So normally, um, and they, they're not terribly expensive. A, a regular PLA roll might only be in the $20 range for a, a decent roll of filament. Um, they, you can get some cheaper ones. A lot of times the cheaper ones you do have to be careful with. Um, not because necessarily they're bad filaments, but they'll be wound poorly and it'll tangle all up. So it's a big mess. Um, you can get smaller, like here's a little half kilogram of, um, aluminum color, not actual aluminum material, but aluminum color. So you can get some smaller ones also. Um, we've got a mini, a Prusa mini here. We'll build that. Um, uh, so if you're starting out, if you just don't have any printers and you just want to get an idea of where to start, I would start with the Ender 3. It's a 200 ish dollar printer, depending on where you get it. Um, sometimes you can get it cheaper. Sometimes it might be a little more. Sometimes you have to pay shipping. Sometimes that's included. Um, but around 200, maybe a little more than $200, you can get an Ender 3. And it's a good printer, relatively easy to assemble and get printing. Um, and it's it's a good beginner printer. Um, now, if you already have printers and you've you've done some more, or or you want to make a bigger investment, then these Prusas are really good. Um, now, if you've ever built a Prusa, um, you might be familiar with more of their other, you know, their style that looks more like this. Those take a long time to build, even for me. They take a long time to build. Um, this Prusa Mini, you can build it in, I don't know, maybe 
30 or 40 minutes. It, it's similar in construction to the Ender 3. It's totally different. You know, it's a cantilever style versus a uh, gantry style, but um, it is pre-assembled. A lot of it's pre-assembled, so you don't have to spend a lot of time building it. Um, let's just look what else I've got in here. Um, oh, this is the extruder mount and uh, an upgraded metal uh, extruder pieces for the Ender 3. Um, what else do we have? Let's see. Oh, this is the uh, uh, auto bed leveling sensors. So this is the BL Touch. That's just some chain guard type stuff. I haven't even opened it yet. Chain guard. This is the uh, spring steel bed with the magnetic bed. Um, those are just parts that we may or may not need. We get everything, including the tools, although they're you know usually kind of low end tools, will be in the box for the Ender 3. Um, and for the Prusa. Actually, the Prusa comes with some relatively nice tools. Um, and over here, we've got, um, we won't spend a lot of time on these, but we've got a resin printer. So this is the Frozen Sonic Mini. Um, uses a resin versus using something like a filament. You know, it doesn't use one of these. It uses a liquid resin that cures with a UV light. Um, and so you can get really high detail on those things. This is just a wash station. Uh, that you can use to wash out the uh, liquid resin that didn't cure, you know, but it's still coating your part. Um, so we'll see how these work. Um, again, these are $200, $250 maybe um, at the lower end. Um, and you get some really nice detail out of those. Um, we, this isn't all that we'll do, but this is a lot of what we'll do. Um, we'll do a lot of things with software. We'll use um, different slicers. Uh, you may not even know what that is yet, and that's fine. Um, I will do everything where you can get by the course um, with something like the Ender 3, a single roll of filament, and open source software. So all this other stuff you don't have to have at all. Um, it's, I'm just going to show you so that you know what it looks like when you hear about it, and you can see, oh, well, that's what that does, and that's how much it costs, and that's how it difficult it is to install and set up. Some of this stuff is really simple to install and set up. Some of it takes a lot more effort um, to install and set up, um, but the minimum thing you'll need is some kind of printer like this. It doesn't have to be the Ender 3. There's others. I have some TiVo um, tarantulas that are on the same price range that are in also relatively easy to install. They actually have a little bit of an advantage when it comes to changing firmware uh, over the Ender 3. We'll get into that later but um, they're in that same price range. Uh, oh, I didn't tell you the price. I think this Prusa Mini is, you can probably, if you can find it available, it's been on back, I actually ordered this in November of 2019 and I got it in, um, it was probably the end of April when I got it, 2020 when I got it. Um, so, so they've been kind of back ordered for a while. This Ender 3, I bought it and got it a few weeks later, maybe a, maybe a week later. Um, and so they, there's just a, a easier supply of these to get a hold of. Um, but this Prusa Mini is in the 380, 400 range, somewhere like that. Um, and it is a smaller printer. Um, and so you can kind of see the size bed. This size will be the print bed for the um, uh, Ender 3. And the Prusa Mini is this size. So you may not can tell unless I hold them side by side. So Prusa Mini and uh, the Ender 3. So it's a much smaller printer. Um, in general though, you don't need to print large items all at once. Um, even if you have a smaller printer, you can break items into smaller pieces. Even if they are, they're one solid model, we can chop them into smaller models and glue them together. Um, we'll show you how to do that um, with some free software. Um, most of the course is going to be related to things you could do on an Ender 3. Um, there will be some other things like obviously the resin stuff you couldn't do on an Ender 3. It's a different process. Um, we won't do anything uh, beyond these type of printers. There are other style printers out there. Uh, there are printers that uh, cure with lasers. There's printers that uh, uh, print metal, you know, uh, from a metal powder. There's Printers that there's there are printers that cut sheets of paper, um, and that you stack all the paper together to create a model. Um, I've never used one of those at all. They're relatively 
obscure, but they do exist. Um, I don't know that they're still a, a main thing or not, but their big advantage is you can print in full color, um, everything. Oh, that's another thing that we will add. <laughs> Speaking of full color, I don't have it with me here, but um, I'll go and get the Palette 2, which is a device that lets you put four different filaments into one box, the Palette, um, and it splices them together into a single strand of filament that gets printed um, and it splices it in a way so that uh, your model comes out in four color. So um, we'll do another way to do multicolor models without that. Um, but uh, this will allow us to print multicolor models, at least four color models. Actually, you can, you can kind of make it more than four colors if you plan ahead. But um, we'll just do four colors and, and do that. Um, I believe that's all of the different things that we're going to do, or at least a, a big selection of the different things. We only have 10 weeks, uh, so we'll, we'll try and add a thing every week uh, and add a different thing. We'll do some other interesting side projects kind of on the printer, in the printer area. Um, but again, for the course, if you're actually taking the course for credit, now if you're just watching on YouTube for the fun of it, then um, you can do whatever you want to. But if you're taking the course for credit then you need something comparable to an Ender 3, at least one roll of filament. It doesn't matter to me if all of your stuff is the same color and you turn in pictures of uh, the same color prints, that's fine. Um, so you need one roll of filament. Um, actually, speaking of that, you can get rolls of filament that go from uh, one color to another or they transition to several different colors. So if you, if you want one roll that's a bunch of different colors, you can get that too. Um, I don't think I have any of that. Um, here to show you what it looks like but basically it starts out red and then it might go to yellow and then maybe to orange and then maybe to purple I don't know but um, uh, as you print the uh, filament gradually changes colors so that's one way to get multiple colors out of one roll um, so you need roll of filament and an Ender 3 ish type printer um, everything else either comes in the box or is something that we're just going to talk about but you don't actually need or it's a free thing so it's like a piece of software that you can just download um, okay I hope that gives you an idea of what we're gonna do this summer gets you excited um, if you don't have your printer right away like I say ordering these uh, right now things seem to be shipping relatively regularly um, in the past students have gotten the Ender 3s from Amazon. Some of them have ordered them from Walmart. Um, and um, those seem to be pretty popular. If you order from a overseas site, just check that they have a, a U.S. warehouse because a lot of them do. They, they have a U.S. warehouse so that you can get it shipped reasonably fast. If you order direct overseas and it has to get on a boat and get here, it's going to take a while for it to get here. So um, if you, there are some better deals price-wise uh, from some other companies. You just have to make sure they're going to ship it from a U.S. warehouse to get it any reasonable amount of time. Otherwise, it's very unpredictable. You might get it in a month and you might get it in a week or, you know, you just don't know. So um, just check on that if you order one of the printers that has to come from overseas. Um, okay, um, we will see you, like I said, June 3rd is going to be the first uh, stream of what we're going to do. We'll probably just get into building the Ender 3 on that day um, and maybe answer some questions if you have particular questions about things set up what uh, you need to do for the first assignment basically we're going to print a lot of uh, test pieces to get an idea of how well our printer is printing um, and uh, we'll look at that so I'll see you on June 3rd have a good week until then uh, week and a half-ish until then and I'll see you then